With the rise in popularity of Clipper firmware, more printers are beginning to ship with it from the factory. In addition to printers, standalone Clipper tablets have become quite popular. These allow you to convert a printer or printers to Clipper while giving a nice touchscreen interface and removing the need for the still hard to find Raspberry Pis. In theory, this sounds great, but there have been some catches like forked versions of Clipper, lack of root access and GPL violations to name a few. This brings us to the newest Clipper tablet on the block from Big Tree Tech called the Pad 7. Unlike previous tablets, this one is running mainline Clipper. Big Tree Tech sent their Pad 7 over a few weeks ago for testing, so I've had some time now to see what it has to offer. In today's video, we will be diving into the Pad 7. We'll go over its specs, what the setup process was like, and I will give you my final thoughts based on my time with it so far. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Let's start by running through the specs. The Pad 7 features a 7 inch touchscreen with a resolution of 1024 by 600. Above the screen there are status LEDs plus a self dimming light sensor and there is a power button on top. The right side has one USB-A, one USB-C and a micro SD card slot. The left has volume jacks and a headphone jack which we will touch a bit more on later. On the back there is a power jack, two more USB-A ports, Ethernet, CAN, and SPI for an included accelerometer. It is worth pointing out that you can't use the CAN port and the SPI port at the same time because the board is using SPI to CAN. The back also has two speakers, a kickstand, and the B2B port which comes populated with BigTreeTech's CB1 board for Linux and a pretty large heatsink. This is a good thing because the CB1 tends to run on the warmer side. For the OS and file storage, there is a 32 gigabyte micro SD card included that comes pre-flashed with Clipper, Clipper screen, and mainsail. In the box with the Pad 7 is a 12 volt 2 amp power supply, a barrel jack with screw down terminals for using your own power supply, an accelerometer with cable, SD card adapter, and screws and standoffs if you decide to swap the CB1 for an official Raspberry Pi CM4. Like Big Tree Tech's other CB1 boards, the Pad 7 is compatible with the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4, which will give you increased specs and performance. Big Tree Tech has a fairly detailed manual for the Pad 7, which covers the process of swapping boards from the physical install, switches on the pad itself, and flashing a new image for those that are interested. The Pad 7 comes with a small pamphlet that has some basic specs and highlights, but didn't include any sort of instruction manual. With this being official Clipper and Clipper screen, there is a lot of information available online, but I still think some sort of beginner friendly next steps would be a really nice inclusion to ship along with this. Powering on the device, other than a brief Big Tree Tech splash screen, I was instantly greeted with Clipper screen and a config error since I had not set up any printer specific configs. For anyone familiar with Clipper, you are going to feel right at home since it's mainline Clipper and Clipper screen, there are no hidden surprises. I started by going under the settings on the pad to find and connect to my Wi-Fi network. Then I found the device on my network, which allowed me to pull up the mainsail interface and I instantly SSH'd into the device with root access. That's right, from day one with the Pad 7, we have root access. If you're using the pre-flashed and pre-installed CB1, the default username is BQ and password is also BQ. I then installed Kaya without issue and I used it to update Clipper, Mainsail, and Clipper screen to the latest version. I tested out the Pad 7 with the Creality Ender 5 S1. I've had this printer for a while and I really don't mind much of the hardware, but the firmware that shipped on this thing left a lot to be desired. Since it's a newer printer, there wasn't a config available in the Clipper repository, but a bit of searching allowed me to find the settings needed for flashing its board and a printer config file. The config took some tweaking, but I eventually got everything working correctly. The performance of the Pad 7 with the CB1 has been really positive. The screen looks great, it's bright and responsive. Some of my wireless experience with the CB1 in the past has been a bit spotty, but this looks to have been worked out and the Pad 7 ships with the latest 2.2 revision. For those wanting a Clipper tablet with full control over the screen and the firmware, this seems like a solid option. Big Tree Tech has been using the advertising of not only a Clipper pad with the Pad 7, which is where the volume and headphone jack come into play. Since the CB1 can easily be swapped out for a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4, this device has the capability of being a full portable Linux computer. 
The USB ports can be used for a mouse and keyboard and the built-in speakers are able to be controlled with the volume up and volume down buttons on the left side of the tablet. I have mixed feelings about this. Part of me thinks it's great that it is set up as a multifunction device. If you decide you don't want or need it for Clipper anymore or decide to upgrade, you can use this for a host of different applications instead of it becoming a big paperweight. On the other hand, I wonder if it wouldn't have been a better idea to remove the volume up, volume down and headphone jack and put in its place two additional USB-A ports that can be used to control two other printers. This may just come down to a difference of opinion, but I would love to know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Do you like that it has that functionality baked in or would you rather have, again, the ability to connect more devices to this tablet? If you're looking into Clipper tablets and weighing the pros and cons of each, the biggest benefit of the Pad 7 is freedom. You get the true Clipper and Clipper screen experience, root access to do whatever you want, and even the ability to repurpose this for other applications. The cost of this is that unlike some of the other tablets such as the Sonic Pad from Creality, you don't get your handheld or built-in profiles. You'll want to either already have experience with Clipper or at least be ready to dive in. I would love to see an open source add-on for Clipper or Clipper screen that allows you to both generate the Clipper bin files for flashing boards as well as the config files directly from Clipper screen. I imagine that this would not be an easy task to orchestrate, but I would think that with the massive amount of examples in the Clipper repository, that that would be a really good place to start. And that has been the Pad 7 from Big Tree Tech. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the majority of the questions that you had. If you have any additional questions, please let me know in the comments down below and I will do my absolute best to answer. As always, if I don't have the answer, I have no problem reaching out directly to the manufacturer to try to get that answer for you. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, there will be links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Deanna from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.